Hello my friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and I'm so glad you joined me. We are going to make this adorable chunky baby doll that's not just a doll, no, not just a doll, <laughs> it's a pajama bag. You untie this little tie at the bottom here and you put a pair of pajamas in there or they can put whatever they want in there. They can leave it like this just to have a snuggly little doll or fill it pajamas, throw it on their pillow on their bed. Um, if you're, they're going in the car for a ride, um, put their favorite things in there. Use it as a little purse. Why not? Um, older, older children would love that. And then there's this other one. This is the one that I'm actually showing you on the video, this little guy. Um, and I've got a pair of pajamas in there already, but you know what? I put my pajamas in there so you could see there's a pair of, of shorts and a short sleeve pajama top in here. And there is plenty of room left for, um, t for stretching. So um, you are going to love this pattern. I love it. I think it's going to sell great on the on your craft sale tables. Um, great for for gifts, but they're not just for babies. Um, toddlers would love these, and you can like give it to a, a nine or a ten year old um, child, and they'll love to have this laying on their bed um, with their pajamas in there and, and carrying it around. So um, I used my Addy Forty Six needle machine for this project uh, for the body. And for the, for the beanie, I used my Centro 40 needle machine. And for the arms, I used my Addy 22. Now, if you don't have the Centro 40, you can um, make your beanie, of course, on your 46 needle machine as well. And if you don't have the Addy 22, you can make your the arms on the bigger machine as well and just fold them in half widthwise to get the right width for them, okay? Um, but I, I hope you love this project as much as I do. I used, um, for this particular guy, I used... Um, Karen's cinnamon swirl cakes. And for this one, there's a mixture. This pink one is Craft Smart yarn and the others are premium, Bernat premium and Bernat super value yarn. So whatever you have, whatever four weight yarn you have in your, in your stash at home, <laughs> that's what I used here. So anyways, I hope that you enjoy this project. Um, the soother we made with a 4.5 millimeter, uh, I made with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. So um, that's adorable too. You're gonna, you're gonna love to add that little, um, piece there and if you don't know how to crochet now's a great time to learn it's just a little piece to learn on so you can easily do it okay so that's my project for this week guys um i hope you really really enjoy making these uh, as much as i did um be sure to hit that like button because that's how youtube circulates my videos as i tell you all the time and i really really appreciate your support in doing that and subscribing and uh and if you um are ready let's get our projects materials and let's get going just quickly before we get going, um, I wanted to just mention that we make these in two pieces, um, and the body in two pieces, and, and I do that for a very specific reason, and that is um, it is a much nicer shape, and I explain that to you further down into the video. So if you're wondering why I'm doing it in two pieces rather than one long tube folded inside each other, there is a method to my madness. Okay, so we are going to start um, with the one piece, we're gonna make two panels that are exactly the same. I'm um, starting with half the head. <laughs> um, we are going to cast on with our, our head color, which for me is going to be um, the white. It's like a winter white kind of, let me just see. It's um, Bernat Super Value in, yeah, winter white is exactly what it's called. And we are going to do the cast on. So we're going to line up our last white and our first black needle with our yarn feeder. We're going to go behind that first black and in front, behind and in front, and cast on just like this. Okay, and halfway around I always set my counter to zero so that when I get to the beginning I'm ready to start my rows. Okay, behind and front, just like that. And if it goes uh, behind that first, that last white needle, then you know you've got it right. Okay. I'm going to just put some slack on my on my yarn and we are going to just knit um, 24 rows okay so you go ahead and you just I'm just going to do this first row slow you're going to knit a total of 24 rows and then you're going to need one piece of yarn that's um going to be our gathering yarn so we're going to do one row with just um with just a color of yarn that is 
you know, part of our body. I'll, I'll show you when we get there. But we're going to do 24 rows and we're going to do one row for a drawstring yarn. And then we're going to complete the project from there. So keep going till you get 24 rows done. And when you finished 24 rows, come back and see me and we'll do the next part. All right, so I just finished 24 rows. I'm going to um, cut my, my yarn end. I'm going to open my yarn feeder. I'm going to put that in between the last white, the first black. Then I'm going to take, I've cut off, um, or I've got a piece of yarn that's coordinating with the color of um, the body of my project, which is like this. Um, this is already one that I've done, but I'm using um, just one of the colors that's in there. And I'm going to put that into my yarn guide. I'm going to do one row. And I'm going to go slowly because I want to make sure that every stitch picks this up. Okay, so here we go. I see that black marked divider coming around. I take a permanent marker and I mark that. And uh, I, it's right there. So now I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to finish this last um, needle there. So I'm going to put it in between that yarn end between the last white and the first black. So this is the yarn ends that I'm going to pull later to draw string close to the head and make it separate from the body, okay? So I want to make sure that it goes over top of this working yarn, okay? And I'm going to grab my ball of working yarn that I'm using and I'm going to take the end and I'm going to put it into the yarn feeder, close the latch, Set my counter to zero. Generally, I would have done that halfway around that last row, but I forgot, but it's okay because it hasn't clicked yet. So I'm going to hold um, the two yarn ends of my working yarn, okay? And I'm going to do three or four needles. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to pull it so that it goes underneath there and it's tightened. Then I'm going to take my project yarn. This is the drawstring one. This this separate color is a drawstring one. This was the, the head color. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to tie a knot. Okay? Because this is now our project yarn. So we've got our knot. We're going to cut that off so it's a little bit shorter. Okay? I'm going to um, now do 55 rows of this color, okay? So then if you don't, if you didn't change this from um, the one that's on there, then you're gonna go till you finish row 56, okay? Or if you wanted to change it before you add that little guide, um, drawstring guide, then you're gonna do 55 rows for the body, okay? Um, my machine, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I cleaned it and it was running just so well, but when these first three black needles get close to the handle, you just listen. Oh, it's just driving me nuts. Um, so I thought I had that little problem fixed and it's not. Every time it goes around, it, it does that. So I have to take this, this machine apart again and figure out what the problem is. Um, and I'm thinking um, maybe, maybe there's something that needs to be replaced in there. I, I know it's not a needle because when I opened it up before, the, um, all the needles were good. And it's in that exact same spot. So I'm thinking that there is something that is stripped in that area um, on that round gold barrel that goes around. Um, so I'm going to take it apart again and I'm going to I'm going to see exactly where I'm at here. And I may have to order another piece to a replacement piece. I've gotten so much use out of this machine that if something has, um, you know, come to the end of its working life, then... You know, I'm okay with that. I'll just buy a piece to replace it. I have gotten a lot of use out of this machine. And so, um, anyways, I'm going to just keep going around. Um, when I get, to, uh, so it's touching the table, I'm going to roll it up in a donut to give it some, to give it some um, tension. And I'm going to keep going around until I get 55 rows of the body. And then we're going to add some waist yarn. So go ahead and, and continue doing that until you get 55 rows. And then um, 55 rows from the from the time where you put this little cinch yarn in um so we did um 24 rows for our head we did one row of cinch yarn now we're going to do another 55 rows okay so when you're done that uh see me back and we'll finish uh the end all right so we finished our 55 rows and i rolled it up in a donut as i was going just so that the tension um was good i cut off a long tail because i'm going to need that for sewing so cut off uh, about a foot and a half maybe um just so you have some extra 
Okay, and then we're going to take some waste yarn. So a color of yarn that's different from your project yarn so that you can, that's actually too close. I'm going to go ahead, because this is blue, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just use the, the white that I have here. Because then I'll be able to see it better than seeing the green against that blue. Um, okay, so I'm going to take my white and I'm going to use it as my waste yarn. Put it into that yarn guide. And I'm going to, I'm going to crank out, um, oops. But that that reason was because this is it was tight um here okay and i'm going to do seven or eight rows of waste yarn and uh making sure that it catches on this first row around because i don't want to lose any of my stitches there we go all right i'm going to do seven or eight rows of waste yarn and when i'm done that um i'll see you back and we'll remove it from the machine okay all right so i have my waste yarn on i'm going to go ahead and give that a cut if i can find my scissors again they always seem to disappear on me when i need them I'm going to cut that end, open the latch, put it between the last white and the first black, close that latch, and then on your second turn around, it will, it will start to fall off, okay? So that's one, and this is two, and it's coming off. Okay, so you're going to make two of these in the same way, okay? So go ahead and get that done, and, um, and then we'll carry on to the next part. All right, we have our two pieces done. We've got them stretched widthwise and lengthwise and they look great. Now we're going to sew close to the bottom end um, with, with our crochet hook, okay? So we're gonna grab our two stitch markers. Where you see your waist yarn coming out of, that little loop there, you're gonna put one stitch marker. Then you're gonna go to the left of it and um, you're going to see that there are two stitches. When you pull this um, working yarn over up into, up to the top here and over to the to the right a little bit, you'll see that there are two stitches here. You're gonna go in that top one, okay? And that's the 46 stitch, okay? Make sure that your ends are on the outside of your work. You're going to then, because we know there are 46 stitches on here, we are going to count around to 23 and 24, and those are the ones we're gonna start sewing with, okay? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. This is twenty three and twenty four. So this is exactly halfway to the other side, okay? So you're going to go underneath that twenty fourth one. You're going to pick up the twenty third one, put it through. So now you've got essentially two stitches that you've worked, okay? Then you're going to go down to the bottom. That's three, up to the top, four, back down to the bottom, five six you can go underneath like this if you prefer seven eight nine ten and you're going to go all the way to the end counting as you go to make sure that you have all 46 stitches okay because if you miss one of these bars um you know one of these stitches here then then uh once you take your waist yarn off it will start unraveling your row okay so you want to make sure you count and uh, have all 46 stitches worked, knowing that that first one that you put on your hook counts as one, okay? So go ahead, finish that um, until you get to the end and then I'll see you back. Alrighty, so if you had your, your count right, then um, this first bobby pin on the bottom here will be 45, you pick it up, get under that stitch. Sometimes they're tight at the, at the end, so that's why it's so nice to have these um, stitch markers in there so that's 45 then you're going to pick up on this one that's 46 you're going to work that then you're going to take your tail and you're going to yarn over and pull it through that little loop pull it on through and tighten it then you can pull this off just unravel it like this the only problem is it's going to get tangled around this this uh blue end that you got there so you want to make sure that uh that every once in a while you pull it out of the way every two rows or so so it doesn't get all knotted up just like that and unwind it and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to do that to your other panel um, and then you'll come back and you'll see me and we will do the next part there we go all pulled out loving it it's great so we've got our end that we're going to use for sewing okay um, we've got it all stretched out and we're going to go ahead and do that to the second one and then see me back. When you've got them both done, you're going to go inside each one. And this one um, row that we put in for our, our um, cinch 
cord. We're going to take that and we want to bring it to the outside of our work, okay? So I'm going to just put that on my needle. I'm going to stick that through that big hole that's there, okay? And do that to the second one so that I can cinch it from the outside, okay? So there it is. That's what we're going to use to cinch this closed, okay? Now you're going to take the top. Always wants to pull off my table because I have such a narrow table. Okay, you're going to take the top and you're going to pull it. And you're going to almost close it, not completely, okay? Let me turn it this way. Well, not completely, meaning when we do a beanie and we close up the, an end like this, we always cinch it really tight and then we go around um, and reinforce it completely closed. But I don't want to do that. I just want to pull it so that it has its natural little um, opening like that, okay? Then I'm going to take... Now, I had I had dropped a stitch, uh, tucked a stitch, so I fixed it, and that part is not nice. So I'm going to put that on the inside. I'm going to take my other piece and, and look to see if there's a side that you don't like. <laughs> more than the other side and whatever one you don't like you put on the inside okay however another thing too wherever your ends are like your young long tails that you have at the corner there um make sure there's one on each side okay so that that doesn't do me any benefit so i'm going to turn this around and put that like that so that i have a tail on this side for sewing and a tail on this side for sewing okay um except for i didn't like this this one so i'm going to go like this and like this always a way to fix it right okay now with our top like this you can go ahead and close one off okay because you don't need two of these two of these long tails so you're gonna grab your scissors and cut this one a little bit one of them a little Take bit that other long one I'm gonna put it inside there and then you're going to just bring your your sections up like um, together and you're gonna you're gonna pretend this is one piece right here so the top of this the top of, of this um, closure this end we're gonna go halfway around it okay then from there we're gonna skip across to this one and we're gonna go halfway around the outside of that one oops just lost it off my needle and we'll fix the inside part on the inside so we're just going to, I'm going to just turn this so I can get at it better. We're going to just keep going around this other outside half. Just like that. And then we're going to cinch it, okay? You're going to find it again. And you're going to go around. And you're going to reinforce it okay and then once you have that done you're going to tie it off in a knot and then hide this in through the through the inside and then um we'll turn it inside out and do the other side okay all right i actually fed it into the inside um and from there i'm going to tie it off so i don't have any knots on the on the other side okay so i'm just going to take this other piece that we had tucked on the inside and i'm going to tie a knot making sure that i do not break it okay now you can just keep that one on your needle there. Cut this other one off because we can we can use this one that we tucked into the other side. Turn it inside out. Ay 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 ay. Where did it go? Turn it inside out. Now I cut it off a little bit too too um, short. And you're going to just reinforce now you've got that other half of each side you're going to go ahead and you're going to go around and you're going to do the same thing tying that off okay so all the way around both halves tie it off in a knot and uh and i'll see you back okay so that looks great we've got our um top cinched okay this part is going to be our head um and it's going to be a double thickness from each of these panels okay so normally when we're making like if, if you've made my cuddle bears um uh cuddle bear lovies then you know that uh we put an inside head um into the one piece but we've doubled both of these we're, we're putting we're instead of using the inside of the single panel we're we're going to make one bigger one um that's doubled like this okay so we're going to take our our white yarn the same size 
same color as, as the head that you chose, okay? And you're going to just attach it to that first stitch, okay? That first stitch just at the bottom there, right where that cinch yarn is. And we're going to do the mattress stitch. Okay, so we're going to find our side here. We're going to um, make sure that the wide part of the V is, is going to the left, is going up, okay? And then we're going to start um, the stitch by going into that first one, picking up two bars, going across into the first one, picking up two bars in the middle of the stitches, okay? And then we're going to pull on that, get those other ones out of the way. We're gonna follow that same row up. And we're gonna complete our invisible seam, okay? If you need to see greater detail and explanation of a mattress stitch, you can find that video on my channel and we can do it more slowly and show you how to do that. But for now, we're going to just continue in an onward and upward manner, just like so, to get the side of this head put together, okay? So keep going till you get up to the top, and then um, I'll show you what I do next, okay? All right, so I'm almost to the top, and I never do this on a blanket. So, but I did th think I'd thought I'd stop on it, pop on, and show you that um, I actually, um, when I got to about here, I moved over one full row, um, just because I was I could tell that it wasn't um, it wasn't positioning the way I wanted it to be. I don't want um, a bunch of gathers in the front here and then tighten in in the back. I want it to be even. So I did. Um, break the rule of invisible joint <laughs> for this part but that's okay because it's gathering up here so you have to kind of do that okay so then I'm going to um pick up two and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eyeball it okay I'm not it's not anywhere perfect I'm not following the same row anymore because I can't and I'm just going to um do the best that I can to get it up to that center piece okay just like that, um, okay. And when I get it up to the center, I'm gonna just go down the other side, okay? But I wanna line it up and see what's happening here first, okay? So I'm going to just go into there. I always choose such long pieces of yarn. <laughs> Makes it a little bit hard, but there we go. It is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to pull that through. Then again, I'm going to pinch at the bottom where I ended the last one and I'm going to pull. Get that all nice and straight. Then I'm just going to skip across to the other side, line it up. By visually visualizing where I think the, the uh, end rows are. And then I'm going to continue on down, okay? I'm going to first just loop this up here, okay? I'm just going to push, put that in just like that. And I'm going to just fasten it off with a little knot. And then tighten it, pushing it down with my thumb. Then I'm going to find my row and I'm going to continue on down as we did before till I get to these two rows, which are my cinch yarns right there. And I'm going to go to that white stitch that's just below, below it. Then I'm going to tie it off, knot it, and hide it on the inside. And then um, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, that's done. The yarn is hidden on the inside and cut off. Um, we've got our ends here waiting to be cinched. But before we cinch them, we are going to... Oh, I've got to hide this one too. This was one of the... Um, yarn ends that I forgot to hide so I'm going to tie that off and hide that on the inside okay then we're going to go down to the side the bottom side okay and we're going to do our mattress stitch all the way up to where 
um, we ended with our with our white color all the way up to the head there and close each side that way same way um, we've same way we've we did the mattress stitch on the head except for this is much easier because you have a straight row okay so you're going to find the very side row um, and you're going to uh, go into that first stitch pick up your two bars go across into that first stitch and pick up your two bars okay and again, I have um, the wide part of the V up at the top going up. So the point is on the bottom and the, and the wide part is, is going up, okay? Um, so we're going to go in where we came out. So here's where it's coming out. I'm going to pick up two bars. Here's where it's coming out on this side. I'm going to go in, pick up two bars. And I'm going to follow this same row all the way up and again this one's easier because it's it's a straight row we don't have a curve to get around okay so keep going get that all done there's no trying to match your colors because we took it straight from the ball as it was coming and so we don't have seams to um seams to match here i mean they might just automatically match up any anyways because uh i think each of the colors in this particular ball are all the same length um but you don't have to worry about that you just want to worry about um staying even on your stitches okay and then you'll land up at the top where you need to be so i'm going to pick up until i get a fair amount done and then i'm going to pull on it to tighten okay i'll just do one or two more here with you and then we'll tighten it and continue on in the process i love doing the mattress stitch it's an easy stitch um, to do um, and it just uh, finishes your work so beautifully okay so pick up two there then I'm going to go ahead and pinch the bottom and pull on this end, okay? Just like so. And it closes it absolutely beautifully. And you know what? My seams are matching up um, because the beauty of this yarn is, again, um, each each section of yarn is the same length. So um, it just it's working out perfectly for this project. Uh, it might not um, line up perfectly for you. And if that's if it doesn't, then don't don't stress that, okay? Um, but if it does, it's a bonus. And I'm just going to keep going in like manner all the way till I get up to here. Then I'm going to knot it off um, just underneath where these pull cords are. I'm going to knot it off and uh, hide my ends. And I'm going to do the other side. And then when, once that's done, I'll see you back. Okay, so both sides are done. That's what the sides look like. So they're come, they've come together really, really well. So now what we need to do, and we have our opening at the bottom, which is what we need, okay? So we're going to take our sides. Let me just, let me just hide this one because I said I was gonna do it earlier and I did not do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it up and out of the way. Just like that, cut it off. Good, done, okay? So now we've got our two sides like this that have our, our um, drawstrings on them. So now we're just going to pull them, okay? We're going to pull them and that's going to pull the one half and this will pull the other half. And I, I knew I had a little bit of a knot in there. So I'm going to have to, I, I went around it with my yarn. So I'm going to have to, um, there we go, pull just the one. Let me see what I've got here. I'm going to have to, I, I've got a piece of yarn that's stranded through there. So that's why it's not pulling. So once you pull this side, I'm going to fix that off camera. So once you pull this side, just like that, we've got this part of the head gathered. And it's, we need to leave a little bit of an opening on the inside because we need to stuff our head. Okay, we're going to go up through the body here and we're going to stuff our head. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, once you, once you do that, you pull on both of them. Um, and then uh, just leave them be. You can cut them off a little bit shorter um, if you need, but we're going to stuff them before we make it too tight. But I'm going to go ahead and, and um, clip this off. And, and what I did is I caught the needle between the thread here, and so now it's not pulling. So I'm going to fix that, and then I'm going to pull this side closed as well. Um, and from there, we can uh, go ahead and stuff the head, okay? All right, so I ended up having to... Um, to hide that one end because I was scared that if I was to pick at it any any more than I would I would wreck the work here so I just um, took another piece of yarn and I ran it in and out on this side of the head um, so that I would have a cord to, to pull on to, okay to, to make a drawstring so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and I'm going to pull this 
until I feel it's where I want it to be, okay? And then I'm going to put them back on my needle and I'm gonna take them back to the inside of the work. So I'm going to just weave that into the, into the seam there, straight into the work, into the middle. I'm gonna put the other one there and then I'm gonna pull them from the inside again and uh, making sure I'm not gonna split the yarn there like I did the last time, because that's what caused me the problem. So I'm gonna just go into there I'm making this look a lot harder than it actually is only because I split that yarn. Okay, you're going to go to the inside. You're going to find these two. And you're going to pull them as tight as you can without breaking them. Always best to have a double strand because uh, you're less likely to break it then. Then I'm going to just tie it just like so. Okay. Tie another knot and even another one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put two of those strands on my needle and I'm gonna just go ahead and pick up as close to that circle as I can. I'm just going to pick up every other row or so, okay? Nothing fancy, you're not gonna see this, but you, if you try to get every row, you're gonna have um, a big thick mess in here. So we're just, I just wanna close it up just a little bit more so that um, the stuffing isn't seen, okay? So I'm closing it up on the inside, but it's, because I'm not going right to that center, you're, you're not gonna see it from the, from the outside, okay? I am sure having problems with, there we go. And I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna tie a knot again, just like so. Cut these off a little bit. I'm gonna take a bigger needle. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hide those into the middle of the stuffing. Okay. Just like that up through the stuffing because then you don't see the color coming through the white, pull on it, cut it off, then take your needle and lift up those stitches so that you don't see it, okay? There we go, we've got a nice big round head. We've got our body, just like so. And this is gonna be big enough and wide enough to hold a nice pair of pajamas. Um, they can even put their toothbrush and toothpaste in there before they close it up and uh, take it on their sleepover and uh, or just lay it on their bed as a doll and uh, and it's coming along great. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our arms. So you're going to grab your Addy 22 needle machine and uh, the same color yarn that you used for the body and we're going to go ahead and make the arms. Unless you want to grab a, a solid color that's in your project if you're using the same yarn that I'm using. Um, whatever whatever your desire is, um, you're going to need some waist yarn and you're going to need your color that you want for your arms. Okay, so go ahead and get that and your Addy 22 and I'll see you back. All right, so in... Um, on my yarn ball, like well, like we did for the body, it comes in sections of color. So I went uh, until I got to the beginning of this um, uh, nice coffee colored um, color and I cut it off right at the start um, so that when I do my next arm, I'm gonna do the same thing. Cause these, each of these lengths on this particular yarn ball, I believe are the same length from what I can tell. So I'm going to start in the same place um, for each arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to reset my counter to zero. Okay, and we've got seven rows already. We want to have um, 27 rows in total. So I'm going to do 20 rows. I'm gonna um, do three or four needles and I'm gonna pop that down there, tighten it. You could let your counter go till you get to 27, whichever you prefer. Generally, that's what I do. I don't know why I reset it, but um, seven rows of your skin color and then 20 rows Of your arm color okay so you go ahead and finish that and when you get that done i'll see you back all right so each color does approximately um 18 and a half rows because i just got a little bit um of color from my next one okay uh, and so that's okay it works out great so i'm going to cut off um 
a good tail on this one because I'm going to need it for sewing. I'm going to pop that into the middle. I'm going to take my waste yarn now because we need waste yarn on one side. I'm going to put that in the feeder and I'm going to do seven rows of waste yarn. You do whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm going to do seven rows. And I think that's five or six. <laughs> okay, and I'll just do one more. I think that's six, but I'm going to just stop there because I've got a knot in my yarn ball here. I'm going to cut that off, open the yarn guide, put that between the last white, the first black, shut this latch so that um, my needles don't nip this this uh, front part when they go around like this. And I'm going to crank my handle so my needle bed goes around twice and then it lets go. You're going to take it off and you're going to stretch it. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to close this end just the same way we closed the ends of the bottom of our body, okay? There's only 22 stitches in this one. So you're going to you're going to um, go ahead and you're going to put your first bobby pin uh, in this stitch where your waist yarn is coming out, then where your working yarn is. You're going to go to the left of that one, and then you'll see there's two stitches here, and this top one is attached to this working yarn here, okay? You're going to put your stitch marker in that one. Then you're going to count around to um, stitch 11 and 12. Okay, you're going to put your hook in stitch 12 and you're going to pick up 11 and you're going to keep going back and forth just like we did. Um, just like we did for, for our base of our body. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And when you're done that, see me back. All right, my wonderful friends, your piece should look like this. Okay, all nice and stretched out. You've got a flat seam on that side and you've got an open end on this side ready to... Um, be stuffed okay so you're going to take your stuffing and you're going to put it into that open end and you're going to push it down into the arm get it into the corners because we're not folding this in half we're just going to have it nice and uh big like this for my cuddle bears we don't stuff them we just fold them in half but for this we're going to just get that stuffing nicely in there we only have one layer, so we don't want it overstuffed because we don't want to see the stuffing through, okay? That's very important, okay? Otherwise, we would have done two layers, but we don't need it because we're not stuffing it f um, firmly, okay? So we've got, if, if your stitches are coming apart like this and you can see the fiber in there, then you need to um, take some stuffing out, okay? So now that we've got that like that, we're going to go ahead and thread our needle. We're going to go around the top here and close this off. Okay, just to secure it. So we've got it nice and lightly stuffed. Again, don't overstuff because we, um, if you have a tendency to overstuff and you want it to be um, firmer, then then um, double this, okay? Um, and, and make it that way. But for, for this pro project, what I'm going to do is keep this single. Okay, so we've got that all around there. I'm going to just grab one strand and tie off a single knot just like that just a single one because I'm going to pop that in through the hole if I can get in there and out the side just like that right where the color change is okay I'm going to bring that out I'm going to just pull on that so that that knot goes on the inside then I'm going to rework that so it's um it's like that then we're going to go around we're going to go over a stitch under a row over under over under following that um edging all the way around okay over, under over under over we were supposed to get so much snow um okay in case you're watching this you know months down the line <laughs> it is april what is it 20th today april 20th um 2023 and we were supposed to get like 10 inches of snow overnight and we hardly got any um but I think it might be coming tonight I think they might, might have misjudged so it's still coming all right so we're going to so I am glad to be down in my craft room <laughs> um working on this I I want that to be I don't want it to be really round either I just you just want to shape it so it's a nice soft little hand okay and then from there I was, no, never mind. 
I was going to make fingers, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, because it'll look like a bear paw. I'm going to just tie a knot there and tie another one. So nothing is tight here. You don't, this, this strand that you did just around in a circle is nice and loose. It just gives it some form, but it doesn't um, cinch it really tight like that. So you've got a very, we want to have a nice, a nice size wrist, so to speak there. So I'm going to put that inside, pull it out the end, cut that off. Okay. Work that like that. Now I've got one arm and what we're going to do with that now is we're going to grab our body. We have our seam up the side here. Okay. So we're going to locate that just like that. We're going to, oops, I've got, <laughs> I threaded a strand of yarn, not the one that's on my arm, just one that was on the table. How silly is that? Okay. And then I always, when I'm sewing onto a head and a body like this, I always take this into the middle. That's just my practice. That's how I do it. You can start on the side if you like. I like to take it into the middle. I'm going to tie a little bit of a knot there. Okay. And so I don't like that little googly there. So I'm going to turn this like this. We've got our, maybe I'm going to raise my camera one second. These uh, doll pajama bags have bigger heads, but that's what I wanted. I wanted it to have a big head. I just think it looks so adorable. Okay. So then where that seam is, I'm going to go up into the neck where the neck and the head join. I'm going to attach my arm. That way I know on both sides it's attached, it's centered because I put, I started in the center of the arm in the center of that seam. Okay. And then now I'm going to just sew, going to pick up, go over from the top to the bottom. And then I'm going to pick up another little stitch on the head there. And I'm going to go across just like that. And then I'm going to feed it into the center and go um, across this side. Okay. So you don't need too, too many stitches. I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to pick up another little tiny section. After I do about three stitches or so, then you can pull on the on the yarn so that uh, it tightens it a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to grab one more little section, just like that. And then I'm going to pull on it. Not too hard. I don't want it to break, but just to make sure it's secure right to the neck. I need one more right here. Just like... So, okay, oops, that kind of looped around. Okay, and then I'm going to put this upside down here so you can see. I'm going to take this needle and I'm going to thread it along the top there till I get to the middle, but this didn't tighten enough, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that. You can actually pull up on your strands just like that and tighten them, okay? Just like that. And then I'm going to, going to take this along that seam to the center I'm going to go the other way. That's a little loose, so I'm going to go in there. I couldn't tighten it as tight as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to fix that. Okay. There. Oh, I felt it. I felt it move that time. Okay. And then I'm going to sew to the end there and uh, tie off a knot and hide this in underneath the stuffing. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing with the other arm. And uh, then we'll move on to our head. Actually, we're going to move on. We're going to do the bottom before we go on to the head, okay? Um, so go ahead, get your arms done, get them attached, and uh, see me back. All right, so we have the arms on. So happy with that. I think it looks great, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to fix our bottom. Now this is why I do two single panels, because um, sometimes to get a, a double thickness, all you got to do is one extra long tube, and then you feed one inside the other, and you have essentially the same thing. But when you do that, um, it makes this smaller. I like the defined sides with the seam um, here, and I love the way the bottom is finished because we closed it. If you were to make like a long toque, <laughs> a long beanie, um, and put it inside each other and then form this same kind of thing, um, you would have an edge at the bottom that's like this, okay? No seams. It's like that. And it's just very flimsy and very stretchy and it's not as nice as this. And I always say in every video um, that detail is what matters. So if it takes a little bit more time to um, to make two panels and to sew them together like that and to have your opening like this, um, it's much better. When, and, and also it does give it some extra width. If you have one piece that's um, folded inside the other, um, you don't have this seam across here that's holding this shape of the um, 
of the uh, doll okay and and uh it's just not as nice you got to trust me on that one it's not as not as nice but you know what you might be able to figure it out and, and um do it that way anyways and, and like it better um so you you choose but this is the way i choose to do this pattern and i think it's the best way to do it but um you can adapt any of my patterns however you like, of course, okay? And so, like, if there's nothing in there, this is such a cute little doll to hold, okay? Um, and when you put pajamas in here, we're going to have to have a little tie at the bottom, okay? So I just went to um, the dollar store and I found... Actually, I think this was Michael's, so um, yes, no, it was Michael's, not the Dollarama, but you can get it, you can get ribbon anywhere, okay? And it was on sale for $2 for this roll. Um, and this color matches this uh, ivory color here, so I'm going to choose to use that. And I already cut it off so I could, um, could show you the length. And when you measure it, it is, I love this little measuring tape, by the way, it is... 30 inches long, okay? And that gives you enough to finish the bottom and to also um, have a nice length for a tie. So you're going to thread your, your needle, okay? And then along this bottom panel here, you're going to find the center, okay? So if this, if this row right here is what I'm gonna consider my center, I'm gonna go on the side of it so that my last one will come out here, okay? So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go under two rows two rows of um, this row here and this row here, two rows of knitting. And then I'm going to um, go over two and right close to this little border that's here, right? The edging, okay? So then I'm going to go, I've come out here. I'm gonna go over that one, over that one, under two and over two, okay? Just like that, all the way around, over two, and under two. Okay, you're gonna do that all the way around. I didn't sew this right close to the end there, I can see, but I'm gonna go right in there anyway, so it's okay. And I'm gonna go here. I might go in and fix that a little bit later. You'll see all these little details as you're doing stuff like this, okay? And then you fix them. So under and over. You're gonna do that all the way around, okay? And when you get to the beginning, I'll meet you there. All right, I brought my camera down just a little bit lower, so um, just in case you couldn't see. so underneath two rows like this and then over two rows under and over and under and over all the way around and I have um if I when I came up here I have three rows that are in the middle there and I'm going to just leave that okay because if I go down if I miss two and go back down under then I have to come back up in that same spot and I don't want to I want to have a space there so however that works out then you want to hold your ends here and just pull on it so that you have them your lengths even, okay? And so then when they put their pajamas in there, they're just going to take this little ribbon. They're gonna tie it. They can practice making their little bows. Our mama can do it for them, okay? Tie it like this. I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite that long. Cut it at an angle. Okay, just like so. And isn't that just something, okay? So that's how they're gonna close off the bottom. Now you can use, I'm making this as a pajama bag, but of course a child can fill this full of their favorite little toys or whatever they want um, and uh, carry it around with them wherever they go. It's gonna become a favorite um, for them. So now we're going to, um, now my camera's a little low, so I'm sorry, but we're gonna go ahead now and we're going to work on the head. So I set my Centro 40 needle machine up and we're going to make a beanie. Um, if you don't have the 40 needle, you can do do it on your 46 needle. However, you normally make a baby beanie. And we're going to start, and I'm just going to grab my um, yarn that I used for the body, and I'm going to just take it wherever the end is here, whatever color it is. I'm going to do a cast on. Oops. In front and behind, all the way around. I haven't used this 40 needle for a while, so I'm excited about using it. Okay, and once we get all the way around... I always use this black needle as my first needle. Um, and then I mark that little pink divider in, in between the last white and the, and the first black one. So it's the same as my, um, my other machines, okay? I'm going to put this into the middle tensioner there. And I have this, um, 
what is it, Susan Bates counter? Yes, it's a Susan Bates counter. And whenever I make a, a round, I just click it with my thumb, okay? Because the count there is no counter on this. I have one of these hooked up on my, so I'm gonna just click one because I'm working on row one. I have this one of these hooked up on my um, 48 needle center as well. And I find it easy to use because I have, let's get around here. I have marked this black thing here so I see it coming around and I know the black needles right after it and then I'm starting another row so then when that comes around I just click it and here we go you know we have lots of conversations about um what's better the Addy or the Centro the Addy or the Centro now there's no doubt that the Addy is more money um and it is a sturdier better quality machine but as far as, and you know, the fact that it has counters too is an actual bonus. Counters that work, the central counters don't work. Um, and if they do, they work for a very short period of time. Um, but I will say that I still do love using my centros. Um, I think they run a lot quieter. You can, you can tell when you're, when you're using it that it's a flimsier machine. It's not as sturdy as what the Addy is, but it has its benefits too. It's lighter weight. Not that that matters actually because it's on the table, but it just overall, like the handle is smaller, but I just find that overall it's a quieter machine and I have success with it. So um, I do love, love my centros as well. Now it's starting to get a little tight because of the ball there. Um, once it starts to get tight, then you're going to start tucking stitches. So I'm going to make sure that that is loose coming out of the ball there. Okay. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to do this until I get 60 rows, okay? And when I get to the end of uh, my project and I have 60 rows complete, then um, I will do a cast off, okay? So you can come back and if you need to learn how to do that cast off with a lot, you cut a long tail and then you take it off every needle, um, then come back and see me. Um, otherwise, keep going, do your 60 rows and then cast off. And then I'll see you back. All right, so I finished my 60 rows. I am going to cut, or I did cut off a long end here. I'm going to put it between my last white, my first black. Take my needle. Okay, then we're going to crank our handle, and we're going to take off one at a time. Now, for my center, I use my Addy clips, like the clamps, to um, clamp this down to my table. And, and it's uh, it holds it beautifully so um, if you want to see how I do that look up my video I have a video on my channel um, that shows you how I use my Addy clamps for my centro machine okay and it does work and uh, I never have a problem with it okay so I'm going to go around like this taking off every every stitch until I get to the end okay pulling that through now I have some slack on it. I can go a little bit further. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So go ahead and remove all your stitches, just like what I'm doing until you get all the way around. Okay. And then I'll see you back. All right, friends. I just want to say that those last two clips that I um, recorded in my central, um, with my center sorry that that they are rotated in a different um angle than i normally do um i i was recording on on a setting that cinematech or however you say it um, <laughs> that i don't usually record on i didn't realize that it flipped to that and uh and you can't rotate them um I, well at least i can't rotate it whenever i try it doesn't work so um at least you can see what i'm doing so that's that's good but then <laughs> When I was videotaping me putting um, this hat together because it was a long piece and you've got your one and the way we did it with our cast on and cast off, I had to cinch the ends. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. I guess um, it's that time of day where I've been I've been uh, videoing and working all day on this and uh, I'll use my excuse as being tired and needing a coffee. <laughs> so anyways, I didn't hit um, I didn't hit the record video record button, but. <laughs> I have another one. <laughs> I'm going to show you how, how I do it on this one, okay? For those of you who have not ever done a beanie, okay? So I'm going to stretch it out. Isn't this beautiful? This is another one that I'm... You would have seen it on the, at the front of the video, but it's an, another one that I've made, and I have to just finish it off, okay? So 
When you take it off, you're going to go ahead and you're going to close up one end just by gathering it. Then you're going to just pick up those stitches all the way around, just the top row of stitches. There we go, just to reinforce the top a little bit further. Okay, and when you're done that, you're gonna just tie it off. So I just pick up a couple strands there. Tie a knot. Oops, I'm gonna get a little bit tangled there. I can see that right now. Went a little too fast. There we go. Tie a knot, and then I'm going to actually cut this shorter. So I'm not fighting with it and I'm going to put that inside so I'm going to pop it through the top hole there grab the end of my needle plus pinch the top of the hat because I'm going to bring it halfway through okay so I'm going to bring it fold it bring it in half so that this end meets this end then I'm going to tighten up this end the same way okay these are all my oops that was my last color change that I did not tie off. I'm thankful I saw that. Okay. I'm gonna just do one more because I can't do it really tight. There we go. Cut that off. Then I'm gonna take this yarn end and I'm going to cinch this side closed. With this one peeking out, okay? Making sure that your yarn end from this one is, is all the way out the whole time, okay? Unroll that a little bit. And keep going. Maybe if I turn it around so it's not so awkward for me because I like to work this direction instead, okay? Tuck in that little end. Then I'm going to put this on my needle and I'm going to reinforce Reinforce this end just like I did the other end, okay? So you go ahead and do that with your second end, making sure again that this one stays out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around this circle once just to reinforce it and then I'll see you back. All right, so now that I've gone around um, that one and reinforce it, I'm going to tie these two together. Just smooth this out. Oh, I love this. This is so cute. Can't wait to, uh, to finish off this one as well. So I'm going to tie those really tight being careful not to break it, but I'm going to tie it tight so that the inside one um, comes up nice and close to the uh, outside one, okay? And then I'm going to take these two. I'm going to hide them in between. Technically, you wouldn't have to because you're going to be sewing this onto the head, but if you're doing one where you can choose which side um, you want to uh, keep on the outside, then, you, then you've got this done and you can choose whichever side you want. But for me, this when it comes to this particular one, um, well, they do look different, actually. I thought they were going to be the same because I did even rows. But this one has the pink at the top and just a little pink brim at the, at the bottom. And then if I turn it inside out, it's got the green at the top. Okay? And pink at the bottom. So I have to decide which way I'm going to put that on my, on my doll. And, uh, yeah. And that's how you close up that beanie. So, um, anyways, I'm glad I had another one that I could fill in the gap with and show you how to do it. Okay? So the beautiful thing about this yarn is that it's and this kind of a hat is that it's it's reversible. So like I'm just loving these colors, but if I turn it the other way, it's a whole different look. You know what? If you bought this yarn and you made baby beanies like this, you would sell tons of them cuz they're reversible. Um use those little um those little pom-pom holders that I also show you on my channel that uh one of our, our um, members of the group, um, Renda, our Facebook group, Renda has um, showed us and you can you can order those from her. But then you can put a reversible pom-pom on here that um, can, you know, you can change the hat however you want if you're selling them um, that way. But for this project, we're going to attach our pom-pom and then we're going to sew this hat on so it stays on, okay? Um, so you have to choose what side you like and this is the side that I like, okay? So then I went ahead and I... Um, pulled the colors from here and separated them from my ball and I'm going to make a pom-pom 
on both of these sizes, okay? On the yellow one and the green one. These are my Clover um, pom-pom makers. Um, I don't know if they have, this says 45 on the bottom and that says 65 on the bottom, whatever that means, okay? But it's the yellow and the, and the mint green pom-pom um, makers. I'm going to make a pom-pom on each of them and then decide which one I'm going to like better for this project, okay? Um, so uh, I also have a video on how to make a pom-pom using the Clover pom-pom makers on my channel. So I'm not going to add that into this video because the videos get way too long. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and attach it and then we will attach it to the head, okay? So go ahead and finish off your beanie um, and make your pom-pom and see me back. All right, so I made my pom-poms. Um, I have four different size clover pom-pom makers. Uh, this is the second size and this is the third size. I have one smaller and one bigger. And I, this one you would think would be the one to go on, but this whole baby looks chunky. Like it's a chunky baby. <laughs> and so I think the big one looks better. So I am using the one that was made on my mint colored clover. And uh, if you have, um, if you have a variety of sizes, then go ahead and do that. And if you don't, then use four fingers and make a big one out of your four fingers. <laughs> um, and that will probably be about the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that to my, um, to the uh, beanie. And then I'm going to take this light colored yarn because I have a very thin red um, edging of the, of the lighter color that's at the bottom of the beanie here. And it so matches the color of the head. So I'm going to take that color of yarn and I'm going to very um, um, gently, or what's the right word, carefully um, sew this down to the head, okay? Because I want it to stay on. It's part of the baby. It's, it's meant to stay on, okay? And then from once we get that on, then we will be able to determine um, where our eyes are going to go. So I'm going to, to sew it on so that this, I want to shape it nicely okay so you're going to put it on comes down quite low at the front and you want to pretend that you see ears there and then cover them okay so wherever you think the ears are going to be cover them just like that and then you can just play with this to stretch it out but you're going to just pick up a little bit of of the um head like that and then once that comes through you're going to pick up just a little bit just slightly underneath the brim um, of that and then go down and then Pick up the next little piece and you want to come right close to the to the head and to the brim so that you don't see stitches like don't don't make long stitches go really close and sew that all the way around start in the middle back so that you're coming all the way around and you're ending in the middle back and then you'll tie a knot and you'll hide it okay so you're gonna go ahead make your pom-pom add it to your hat sew your hat down and when you've done that come back and we'll work on the last details of the face okay all right, so I have my hat how I think um, I want it. And then I'm gonna just turn it around, okay? Pull this down, and then this is where I'm gonna start, okay? So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of yarn there. I'm gonna leave a, a yarn tail here because I'm gonna just tie a knot here, okay? I'm gonna leave like a yarn tail on this end that's long enough so that I can hide it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish attaching that. Then I will put this on a needle. I can do that right away actually. Actually, I'm gonna leave it because when I get around then I'll tie off my end to it and then we'll just hide it under, okay? So again, I'm just going to, I just thought I'd pop on and just show you carefully what I do. I'm just gonna go under, pick up a little bit there. Then I'm gonna just pick just not the very rim here, but just a little bit lower. And sew that on. Okay, then pull it down. And I'm gonna go around and just continue in that same way. Grabbing a little bit of the head and just underneath, slightly under the brim, grabbing a stitch there and then pulling it. See, because then you can't see, you cannot see the yarn there. You can't see the stitching um, at all. And that's what you want, okay? And every once in a while, you're going to just turn your head and make sure that this is not, see right now, if I look at that, it's at a slant. I don't know if you can see that, but I want to make sure my hat is evenly centered around the head, okay? So every once in a while, um, stop stop sewing and take a look at your hat placement and see if it's shifted. And, and uh, if it has, then put it back where you need it to be, okay? So again, I'm going to just pick up a stitch.
and one up here. And I'm going to go all the way around like that. And when I get to the end, back to here, I'm going to tie these two off and then I'm going to hide them in underneath the stuffing. Okay, so easy peasy. All right, friends, isn't this just like, oh, I'm just in love. So cute. I can't wait. I'm going to make a lot of these because they're going to be excellent gifts. Excellent, like not just for um, babies, but for toddlers. A five, six, seven, eight year old would love this as a pajama bag. Ten year old. Like it's just the cutest thing. Um, and because it's so chunky, um, it's just so squishy and soft and I, I just love it. Okay. So you're going to grab your darning needle. You're going to um, put the color of nose that you want and you're going, we're going to Go ahead up the side of the face here and we're going to come in about the middle there. The middle. Well, you'll have to eyeball it because I can't really tell you where to go, but it's, it's, um, my finger length up. <laughs> okay. There's more space from the chin up to the here than there is from the eyes. Cause I want it to look like the, like the beanie came down, um, really close to the eyes. Okay. So all we're going to do is coming, come in here and we're going to go across two rows of stitches and we're just going to keep coming across just like this and back and forth till we get a little bump and that's all we're going to do for the nose just like that second time i'm not pulling too tight because i do not want to um, change the uh tension of this of the rows of stitches so i'm just going back and forth until it until it uh, snugs up to the to the head but doesn't pull on the rose. Okay, there we go. This is number four times around. And then I will check it again. I'm going to do one more time. One more time, then out the side of the head. Underneath the stuffing because you do not want to see it. Out that same stitch. And then when you pull it, you're going to be careful that... You're not pulling it too tight, okay? And there's a cute little nose. Oh, so sweet, okay? Now I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to give this a tie, being very careful that I don't um, pull the nose tight. So I'm just going to give it a nice loose tie. It's, it's underneath that stuffing. It's not going to go anywhere, okay? Then I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to go into that same hole up out through the top of the head here gently pull on it cut it lift up the stitches where I came out there lift up the stitches here you'll never know it's there and that nose isn't going anywhere okay so now that we got the nose we're going to grab our color for our eyes and I'm just gonna grab black yarn all right so sorry about the ang like if the camera is too far away, if the picture is too far away, but because his head is so big, I have to raise the camera pretty high in order for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to go back in, come up where I think the first eye should be. Okay. Then I'm going to just go up a little bit and straight across, just like that. Hopefully you can see this. Okay, then I'm gonna go down and over. Okay, just like so. Could probably use a little bit um, smaller of a needle. And then I'm going to go back into the top here. Then I'm going to go back down to that point. Bring that across into this point to finish that bottom row back up to this top point. Okay. So now this has two strands. This has one and this has one. So I'm going to go down into there to finish that one. Come across. So now the top two have two strands. Oh, look at that shredded. That's not good. I was going to just skip over to this other eye, but now I'm going to go in because I need to change my yarn. I'm going to go in and come back out to the side. Okay. And 
and I've got one eye. I'm going to tie that off and I'm going to hide it and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side, okay? So um, then I have my sleepy time eyes and my nose and once I'm finished that, I'll see you back. All right, friends, are you having fun yet? I love this project so much. Sometimes you do a project and it just hits you as, oh, this is this is a beautiful one. I love it. And uh, I hope you do too. We're going to make the soother now. So I grabbed um, the color of choice that I wanted, a 4.5 millimeter hook. You're going to wrap that around your finger and cross it over at the top. That, And then you're going to put your hook underneath this first one. Grab that next one and bring it up and turn it. Then you're going to just grab that yarn. You kind of have to do a funny finger thing and pull it through. Now slow this down if you really need to, um, because it's that's how you do the magic circle. That's how I do the magic circle. <laughs> okay, and uh, then I'm going to go into that circle and I'm going to make a single crochet. I'm going to do five single crochets. Okay, I'm going to pull that a little bit tighter so I don't have such a big circle to work into. That's one, two. You can put a stitch marker in that one if you need to um, know where it is. This is three and four and five okay then i'm going to pull that yarn tail closed okay you can kind of feel it lock when you give it a little tug okay then i'm going to go into that first stitch and i'm going to slip stitch to join so through that stitch and through this next one okay then i'm going to chain up one and in that same stitch i'm going to do two single crochets so one and two i'm going to take my stitch marker and i would encourage you to do that as well and you're going to put it in that first stitch okay so that's two in that first stitch then in this next one we're going to put two single crochets one and two and then the next one one and two and the next one, one and two. And if you don't know if you're done, you just count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had um, we had uh, five single crochets, so we need ten. So this is nine and ten. And my yarn is changing colors. I sure hope I don't mind that when <laughs> when we uh, finish this project. Okay. So then now there is my stitch marker I'm going to go underneath that stitch I'm going to slip stitch to join I'm going to chain up one I'm going to go into that same stitch I'm going to do one single crochet and then in the next one I'm going to do two one and two okay so I'm going to go back now and I'm going to put that stitch marker in that first one so now in the next stitch I'm going to do one single crochet and in the next stitch I'm going to do two one and two and then in that next one you got it one and then two one and two and then in the next one one and then two okay and one and two This is your slip stitch to join. That was your chain one. This is where your first stitch, your first um, stitch was. So we're going to go into that, take out that stitch marker. We're going to yarn over, pull it through that loop, pull it through the one on your hook. That's our slip stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull it through. We're going to leave a little bit of a tail for sewing. Okay. There we go. That is our base of our soother this is nice and snug in there because um, we pulled it tight with our with our magic ring um, and this is going to be sewn down otherwise I would have fed that around but it's tight I felt it go tight so it's not going anywhere okay and so now we're going to take our lighter color yarn right here I'm going to just go into the side here I'm gonna there's this one rim here I'm gonna go just beside it on the inside and I'm going to leave a bit of a tail here so that I can hide it. 
and I'm going to grab it and put it through. Okay? And then I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if that's long enough to reach across. Oh, this is slipping out of my hands. Seven, I'm going to go ten. Eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to just pull that through, cut it off, tighten that. I'm going to grab my small needle. I'm going to put it on my needle here. And then I'm going to sew it right across, straight across. Okay? So when you're holding this down, just eyeball it, go straight across and underneath. Or here's that the last row, go just to the inside of it, just like you did with the other one, okay? Pull that through. <laughs> These little things are so hard to, uh, to manage sometimes. Then go back through to the bottom or to the underneath side. Then you're gonna just tie a little knot And again, just like that. Then for this one, I'm just going to, I don't want it to poke out, so I'm going to just trail it in through here. Cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my needle. I'm going to take it to the back of my work, and I'm going to... Um, do what I did with this like I did to the other one. I'm going to hide it, okay? So you go ahead and do that, and then I'll see you back. Alrighty, so once that's done, we're going to put it underneath the nose so that this is completely, like, so that this is in the right direction. You don't want it sideways like that. <laughs> you want it flat like that so that this goes across like this. And then we are going to sew this little soother onto our head. Going under that first row of stitches, and then just picking up a bit a bit from the body, okay, from the head. Just like that. And again, you want to go close to the work so that you are not putting lines. You don't want to see lines because um, babies don't have lines on their face. So you don't want to see lines from your stitching. And you're going to go all the way around and you're going to sew this cute little soother on to the face. Just like that. Then you're going to hide your your end and uh and you will be done okay that was so great i'm gonna take some little some, just a tiny bit of red blush powdered blush and i'm just gonna sweep the sides of the cheeks um just ever so slightly i'm not gonna do that on camera but i'm gonna do that ever so slightly and you can do that as well and uh and it will um just add to your project okay so go ahead finish sewing on your soother and my friends the project is done stuff it with a pair of pajamas um or a favorite little blanket will fit in here roll it up tight and and stick a little blanket in there and uh they've got this beautiful little gift a doll in a blanket or a doll in pajamas oh how sweet is that so there you have it i'm going to finish my uh soother and then i'll see you back all right soother is on and it looks great both of these these are our two that i've done and i'm just so thrilled with them um i hope you enjoyed this tutorial my friends thank you so much for joining me um please uh go to my facebook group koala knits and knacks and join if you haven't already and show us all um your projects that you make we just would love to see um and and post them in other groups as well so that uh, it can circulate the pattern but uh thanks again my friends for supporting this channel i sure do um love uh spending time with you in this way um so take care have a great day and we'll see you soon